The latest edition of IQ magazine includes a series of articles exploring digitization and automation in the derivatives market. While trading systems have long been used in the front office to bring greater automation and efficiency, other parts of the trade lifecycle have remained reliant on manual, paper-based processes. This is particularly evident in the legal documentation and definitions that form the foundation of the derivatives market. This is changing rapidly, partly accelerated by the experience of remote working during the coronavirus pandemic. ISDA has been working for some time on digitizing flagship documents. And last month, we published the first fully digital product definitions, the 2021 ISDA interest rate derivatives definitions. To discuss this seminal development, I'm joined by Jonathan Martin, Senior Director, Market Infrastructure and Technology at ISDA. John, thanks for joining me. Hello. Can you start by explaining why these new definitions are so significant for the industry? Yeah, as you say, John, these are really is this flagship uh, definition booklet, you know, first published in 1987, last published in 2006. And up to now, they've always been, you know, fully paper based uh, booklets that were published and then uh, any amendments to those booklets had to be made via PDF supplements. And with the 2006 definitions now, I think we're up to 77 uh, paper PDF supplements that have been published to keep up with market practices. So that basically means that if you do a trade today under the 2006 definitions, you not only have to read through the, uh, the initial booklet, I have it here, the old 2006 definitions well used, you have to read through 77 supplements to see if any of the terms in that booklet have been amended. And obviously, you know, that's pretty inefficient. So the 2021 definitions, which is the latest iteration, is published in a purely digital format. So that means that we no longer any need for paper uh, supplements uh, whenever an amendment needs to be made. We can just reversion that whole booklet and, uh, and, and republish it uh, in its entirety. So that means if you do a trade in five years, you will know you wouldn't have to look through all the amendments. You would just have a single uh, digital booklet that is up to date with all the amendments, and then you can run a comparison between that booklet and the booklet that was in place, say, five years ago. If you have a similar trade, to find out what differences there are between um, the, the booklet at, at the, that time, the booklet at that time of your trade. So it's going to make it a much, much more efficient process of actually looking at what terms apply to your trade. So aside from the digital format, what other updates are included in the 2021 definitions? So yeah, obviously the, uh, the restructuring of the booklet into a digital format is, is a very important part of the update, but there are also you know, some uh, material changes to the uh, content of uh, the 2021 definitions compared to the 2006 definitions. One of the main changes is the cash settlement methods so the, uh, the main cash, default cash settlement method that's used for early terminations in the 2006 definitions is called cash price, cash settlement method. And that is largely unchanged from uh, the time the original booklet was published in 2006. And obviously, a lot of changes have taken place since then, increased use of clearing, collateralization, all the regulations that have come into place since the financial crisis. So we've actually uh, replaced that cash price method with five alternate approaches in the 2021 definitions. And those alternate approaches uh, can really be uh, classified into two main categories, a replacement value approach and a mid-market valuation approach. So that's really one of the key uh, changes. Other changes are uh, the addition of more robust fallbacks uh, for all uh, floating rate uh, benchmarks in the uh, 2021 definitions. Obviously, more robust fallbacks were added to the 2006 definitions for the eyeballs, but the 2021 definitions adds more robust fallbacks for all floating rate options. There are also some changes to uh, calculation agent provisions. There are also uh, some changes to how uh, business days, uh, uh, conventions, uh, days, dates, and periods are determined in the 2021 definitions, really to reflect the way the practices that are actually uh, happening in the market currently. So there are there's, that's a flavor of some of the changes that are being made, but there, there are some key changes compared to the 2006 definitions. And the definitions were published in mid-June. What's the timetable from here for implementation? So yeah, we, the definitions were published in, in June and they can be uh, looked at and uh, purchased uh, on the digital platform. 
However, the market agreed not to start using the 2021 definitions until the 4th of October. And the reason for that is because, uh, you know, it takes uh, time for people to digest the changes that have been made and for their IT departments, uh, operation departments to actually implement that into their systems and processes. Um, and in previous iterations of the definitions, we've kind of just published the definitions and left it uh, to people to implement at their own pace. But with uh, you know, 15 years on from the last iteration of the definitions, uh, with all the interconnectedness of infrastructures such as clearing houses, um, trading venues, middleware, et cetera, it was important to really try to pick one date where the market coalesces around as much as possible to increase efficiency. So, for example, most of the major clearing houses are going to all implement the definitions on the 4th of October. So that will be the date where their rule books will be uh, changing to follow the 2021 definitions rather than the 2006 definitions and the date that uh, you know, middleware providers such as MarketWire will, uh, you'll be able to uh, submit a trade and uh, confirm a trade uh, using the 2021 definitions. However, you know, I don't think that you know, uh, the 2006 definitions are not going away, they're not being deleted, they will still stay in place. And I expect that people will still use them for a period of time and there will be uh, kind of a, a phased out period where it, you know, people will still use them for uh, some amount of time uh, before uh, switching over to the 2021 definitions. But the important point to remember is that from the 4th of October, ISDA will no longer update the 2006 definitions for new provisions, new benchmarks, et cetera. So um, from the 4th of October, the 2006 definitions will be frozen in time and uh, updates will only be made to the 2021 definition. So uh, the, the longer past you go past the 4th of October, the more stale that 2006 definition booklet will become. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, as I say, I, I expect for a lot of firms there will be um, uh, a period of time where they keep legacy trades on the 2006 definitions and even do some new trades on the 2006 definitions. But uh, you know, the 2021 definitions will be the live default document uh, from the 4th of October. Um, and, uh, you know, and most infrastructures will be ready from that date. Well, thanks very much, John. The latest edition of IQ magazine features a package of articles on digitization and technology, including a roundtable with predictions and expectations for the future from a range of market participants and technology providers. We also have some interviews with senior policymakers including SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce and Jennifer Robertson, acting head of the Financial Market Infrastructure Unit at the European Commission. IQ is free to download on the ISDA website at isda.org. Thank you. Thank you.